This is episode 3 out of 6 on the How to Black Border Every Single Map series. This is the complete comprehensive strategy guide, and if you haven't seen the first episode, you can do so right here in the first pinned comment down in the comments section of this course. Uh, I highly recommend watching this episode, and it's going to give a lot of background that you need to know for the rest of this episode, which is episode 3, The Early Game. We're going to be looking at all aspects of the early game and helping you figure out a good strategy to beat it every single time on your own. I'm going to put this into 10 parts in this episode, which is going to be a really long time, so let's get through it. There's a lot to unpack here, and all of this is very important to increasing your skill in the game so we're going to go from parts 1 through 10 with four strategy showcases in between and so let's get right into it with the first part being the rounds knowing what is on every round or at least even having a general understanding of what is on every round is something that a lot of players don't think is that important but it really is if you do want to get better at the game, learning what are on these rounds is really important. For example, you might think your defense is doing great because you're on these rounds that are pretty easy and you can beat them up. But when some important round comes that you're not ready for, you're just going to lose your black border like that and your strategy is going to fall apart. And generally, you're going to learn the rounds more as you play. So don't worry if some of this might be hard and you don't have all of the early game rounds known. So let's go through... All of them right here just to give you a quick refresher and see which ones are important or not this is round six it's the first round you should be familiar with it so i'm going to look at important rounds notable rounds and nothing rounds these rounds are going to tell us what we should be paying attention to in the game nothing rounds are pretty simple you don't really have to worry about them notable rounds are good to know and it can help your gameplay but it's not strategically important for every single strategy and important rounds are rounds that you need to know and you're going to need to make sure that you can beat that round before it comes up. So round seven here, that's fine. Round eight, usually not an issue two. These are simple rounds in the early game along with round nine. Our first round that I'm going to say is notable is round 10 because at the end of all these blues, there's a pretty sizable chunk of blues that are tightly concentrated together and can be challenging. Round 11, 12, and 13 are usually fine going on to round 14 it can be a little bit trickier but normally if you can't beat this round then you probably have an issue against round 15 which is going to be an important round here round 15 is when things start to ramp up and there are a lot of boons that will love to sneak through your defense if it's not well built early on in the game round 16 should be good 17 is the first regrows, but it's just a few and it's very easy. 18, it's kind of like round 10, but it's a little bit later on. Round 19 has some stuff, and then round 20 has the first blacks. With 21, a bunch of yellows. This round's usually fine, but round 22 and 23 sometimes can be tough because there's lots of whites and blacks in here, and... For some defenses on harder maps in the early game, this one can be a tricky one. Round 24 is very important. This is the first camo, so you need to make sure you can pop camo by round 24. Round 25 is notable because there's a bunch of purples. These can be tricky depending on what your strategy is built around. Round 26 is usually fine. Round 27 can be notable because these balloons they do layer on top of each other so if the map is long sometimes this round can be tricky because they come together so round 28 is very important this is the first leads so you need to make sure you know that's round 28 29 is easy 30 is easy if you can pop 28 you can pop 30 round 31 is notable because there's just a lot of stuff in general in here on harder maps this usually is trickier than easier maps round 32 is fine round 33 is very important because this is when the next camo wave is there's lots more camos so you need to make sure that you can pop these camos or else you are going to die that would be very sad round 34 is fine round 35 is notable because like 31 i guess there's just a lot of stuff on this round um you can die to it of course these rounds are more tricky if it's a harder map and also there's like these big rainbows and black rushes round 36 i'm gonna say is important because these pink waves come out of nowhere and they come out fast and you need to be ready to take them down along with the camo greens round 37 i'm also gonna say is important but a lot of times this round is fine but this round it's good to know because there's lots of leads on here 
and there also are those camo whites at the end. So you need to make sure that you have upped your lead game and upped your camo game by round 37. Round 38 is notable. It's kind of like round 37. There's the leads in there, but also at the end, there are two ceramics. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky, but moving on, round 39 is fine. And then round 40 is also another important round. You need to know that this is the first Moab and you will be prepared to take down the Moab. Round 41 is fine. Nothing on there really. Round 42 is pretty important because this is when we get the camo rainbows. You need to really make sure you have a decamo option or a strong camo dealing tower by that time. Round 43 is also important because there's lots of ceramics there which can trip you up especially on the harder maps. 44 is nothing and 45 I'm going to say is notable because there are camo purples on here. You just need to I guess know for some few strategies that those are camo purples. Round 46 is fine. 47 is notable. Lots of ceramics there. Round 48 is usually pretty fine. And round 49, I'm going to say is another notable round. Some people would say this is important, but by this time, you usually will be able to take out the big wave of ceramics that are hiding under these greens on round 49. Round 50 is going to be the end of the mid game here. This really depends on the strategy, but I'm just going to call it round 50 for the sake of this series. So there's just two Moabs on this and you're going to be preparing to pop a lot more Moabs. So you just need to keep in mind that there's the important rounds that you need to remember and then some maybe more notable rounds to keep in the back of your head. So let's look at the section two, which is starting in chimps mode. So starting in chimps mode is something that a lot of people have struggles with so i have three options here you're either going to do a hero start a tower start or a regular start so let's explain what these are so first off the hero start is pretty much the simplest thing here uh you just start with a hero so it would either be quincy or sada because those are the cheapest ones that you can start with it's pretty nice it's pretty simple and it will work on a lot of maps uh particularly more like beginner and intermediate maps maybe a few of the very easy advanced maps you can start with Quincy too. However, of course, you're limited to being only able to use those two heroes. So if we want to do something more, we're going to have to start with a tower itself. So this is the tower start. It's just like, say, starting with a ninja, for example, like right here. You're starting with the tower that you're going to eventually build right into. So for example, like as you can see here, I built right into the ninja, which beat up the Moab pretty nice and easy. But as you notice, these two examples don't really always work. As exampled here, I have X-Factor Chimps, and the Sada definitely does not start, and nor does the Ninja definitely not start. So if you're asking how do I start on Chimps, uh, particularly these harder maps, I have option three, what I am going to call here a regular start. So when it seems like the heroes, the towers that you're going to use, upgrading some of these towers to maybe try to start out like this definitely is going to work. I'm going to pull this out and we're going to spam the 000 towers. Now this might seem strange at first, but for early game, this is kind of what you do. Uh, a combination of a bunch of few 000 towers that have a lot of potential in the early game is really what you end up doing to win. And of course, this has to be in a controlled manner for only the very first few rounds of the game. Normally, you will stop doing this at all costs by around like round eight or nine for some of the easier maps and then maybe up to like round 15 for some of the harder maps but this setup will build right into your early game so there on x factor we got the ninja and we're good to go some examples of this is going to be sub dart these are going to be super common early games that you're going to be using eventually you'll notice that these placements are often very particular they're spread out which is very important because you don't want the towers to be trying to attack the same balloons so let's look at the next combination this is sniper dart this one is a bit more interesting the snipers of course are going to be able to take out some stronger balloons while the dart can use its pierce to take out the rest and of course as you can see another thing in these starts is that there's often a lot of micro some targeting and all so the next one's going to be ng ng and druid are kind of similar you can do an ng dart start or an ng druid start you'll see that later too but you can also see more targeting so for some of these guys i'm setting them to last 
and they're going to be put on a straight so they can shoot straight down the street and then we can have usually a dart monkey at the end on first cleaning up you also might see dart monkeys on strong further up to try to take out some of the stronger balloons like maybe a yellow that's trying to get by but yeah that's some of the targeting in general you'll figure it out later but lastly to go off you have probably the most common you'll see this a lot you'll probably use this a lot triple dart start very very effective and very strong so that's kind of really how you start off um, and to end it all off sometimes you'll see a combination of all of these like a sub a dart and a sniper now it's time to take a break and look at our first example strategy of this entire series which is going to be the avatar of wrath so let's get right into it i'm going to be starting off this by showing the example of avatar of wrath here on the map winter park i think that's the name of this map and as we learned before, we're going to be using some simple early game towers to be able to pick up the pace and get Oban and all of the other druids going. So we're just going to be starting off with a 000 druid and the 000 dart monkey. Pretty simple. Um, this combination won't be able to get quite up to Oban, so I'm going to grab just a sniper there to take out some of the stronger balloons while the druid and the dart monkey clean up, clean stuff up. So from there, I can save straight up into the open on round 11, which is nice. From there, we can get into the rest of the strategy, which I will be glad to tell you about. So this strategy is pretty unique. Um, it's a very popular one. You might have seen it before, but a lot of people don't really play it correctly. Uh, well, maybe they'll play it correctly, but not that optimal. So I'm going to show you a, a pretty optimal way and pretty easy way of doing it. This will get you like all of your black borders on beginner maps and intermediate maps and some of the advanced maps too if you're feeling fancy and it can even be adapted a little bit um to have a, a stronger early game and stuff that will be able to take out some harder maps like some of the the advanced maps too so yeah it's a pretty good strategy um and there's a lot to learn from this so let's get right into it so it's very unique compared to a lot of them because it's going to start off by like spamming a bunch of these zero 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 druids and that's because this is really going to teach you a lot about placement. There's a lot of placement, and you need to cram in these 000 druids. So I did that. We got a bunch of them. We'll end up getting six later, but uh, when round 24 comes around here, as you notice, we'll have to get something for camo. We aren't going to be getting camo until camo village with this strategy. So I'm going to start off just by getting a 100 spike factory. Right now it's 000, but um, normally you'd get it to 100. And that's going to take care of the camos on 36 and 37. And then we'll have the village up on 42. Oban there conveniently pops the leads, which is nice. And we'll have our six druids. So we'll have them kind of like in a block, like a two by three or a three by two block. And then one of them will be hanging off on the side. You're going to want to have them all in range of each other. Um, even though the one at the side looks like it's not in range, when we buff it up with a village, it will be in range. But from there, this uh, little cluster of druids is doing really well and we'll be able to. Uh, beat the rest of the early game with this on some harder maps make him a little close and you might be able to do a little bit more uh, advanced strategy with this but this is a pretty good example of what to do for these beginner maps from here as you can see this saves up quite a bit but we'd want to get our village up there so we just have a 200 village i'm turning auto start off right here because i did not spend my money before so we're just going to be getting a 200 village so it covers all of these guys we'll be getting that to an mib later um, but then from there i'm just going to start upgrading these guys with some lower level upgrades so i'm going to be getting uh 023 on all of them and this will be sufficient in beating up the moabs uh, with this, we're also going to use the Oban ability. Now, this kind of build order, uh, it goes just straight into the druids like this. It's pretty nice. It's pretty easy to do. Nothing complicated. But for some harder maps, as i shown before, you might need a little bit more. And uh, you also, if you're a little bit more advanced, you could get into some discount stuff. And also, as i shown before, when we have that village up, we're going to have to stop spending on the druids on round 42. I mean, on round 40. So as you notice, I did not upgrade that last druid. And that's because we need to get the camo village up before round 42. So if you stop spending on round 40, you'll get the village camo upgrade as I did right there, which is a perfect example. From there, we're just going to continue upgrading our druids. And the strategy is just clean. We're not getting distracted by spending uh, money on useless upgrades. Uh, and that's kind of something that you're going to be noticing a lot too. 
um, and we're just going straight into the druids after that we're going to be getting the alchemists up and this kind of concludes the early game this is a easier example on an easy map it's nothing too complicated just so if you need a good strategy to help you out there this one will definitely work out which is pretty nice and if you want to see what the rest of the strategy looks like and tips on it in general uh we'll be all be at the end of the video so we will come back to it but let's look at the next tip for early game all right so our next part here is the early game carry this is a concept that you probably should want to learn how to do in order to pull off some good early games with very interesting strategies so as you can see all of these towers they're pretty cool later on but when they're like a tier three or a tier four they kind of suck these are not really going to beat the early game for you as you can see these druids not going to do that well against the moab and when it comes to the heli the ceramics inside just go right through so we're going to be looking at some air early game carries to be able to help out some of these so there's three main objectives here it's build right into the start supplement your early game or complete early game carry when playing chimps mode you're going to have one of these so let's check them all out the first one is your strategy involves a tower that works right into the early game and you can build right into it so for example, I could start a chimps game with an 024 sniper and then build right into elite defender and elite sniper right after. The second objective is going to be a supplement tower that you put in your strategy so you have enough power to beat the early game. An example like this is going to be this druid where I'm going to get spirit of the forest later on right there, but I need a little bit of help from the sub to get there. And the third objective is going to be a complete early game carry where your strategy does pretty much nothing in the early game. This example is going to be with the carpet of spikes and I need a complete early game carry with this ace here in order to get the carpet of spikes because the carpet of spikes itself, it's just going to be a really bad spike that's not going to do much in the early game. So choosing the right objective will make things a lot easier and cost less. For example, if I'm going to be going for a carrier flagship here, I'm not going to need to get an early game supplement from this spike factory because it's not needed it's a waste of cash and i'm just going to be getting the carry flagship later so now let's take a look at some examples of towers that help and towers that carry a 320 ng will help a 420 ng can help carry we're going to have next a 203 ace with an alk buff this guy is going to be one that's going to be a complete carry and then we have a 302 heli with an alk buff that's going to be another complete carry an 023 sniper can help while a 024 sniper with alk buff can do a complete carry for you an 022 wizard can help while an 032 wizard can do a complete carry for you an 030 druid is going to help out a lot and then a 100 spike can help out while a 320 spike with an alk buff can carry a lot and then moving on to the most famous you're going to see these a lot it's a 402 ninja with an alk buff or you could do a 302 ninja just to help out but a 402 ninja with an alk buff and the 204 sub with an alk buff is really what you're going to be seeing a lot these guys are the most common they're pretty much the best but you still can use a lot of other options to help out so these are the towers that you're probably going to be seeing that will help carry and help out your early game defense in a very cost effective way that works out well all right so now that we've looked at what an early game carry looks like let's check out, check out a strategy that uses that very well and a strategy that's just good in general too so we're going to be checking out the comanche commander with glue storm strategy it's a pretty simple one it fits everywhere um and it's very effective now i'm going to start off by talking about the hero so when it comes to the hero you can like pretty much do anything the cool thing about this strategy is that it will really fit into any map kind of ish as long as it's a single lane map even if there isn't much space you really can do this which is pretty neat and you can also use pretty much like any hero for this um geraldo used to be like the stand allowed stand alone best hero for this strategy but since the nerf to sharpstone uh the merit for using geraldo with the comanche commander has fallen a bit although he's still pretty good so i'm just going to be trying out gwen because gwen gives some cool buffs too which will help out Comanche Commander a lot, but you can pretty much use any here, which is nice. So as I mentioned before, we're going to be doing a little bit of an early game carry because Comanche Commander, it doesn't really have the best save up early game. Like you're going to have the Moab shove. What really is that going to do to a bunch of balloons? It's just going to shove a Moab. So we're going to be having him to 
but we're going to be getting a ninja monkey with an alchemist that's one of the big ones that i mentioned before that will really allow us to beat a bunch of the rounds and like go into round 50 because we aren't getting the comanche defense which has decent balloon popping power until right before round 50. so this guy is going to be very important it's going to be vital for our strategy and being able to stay focused on one early game carry is going to give us a ton of power great synergy and we aren't going to get distracted by spending a lot of upgrades along with this we're also going to have a cheap combination that will set us up into a powerful tower later on so let's check it out we have our ninja monkey just a 302 uh double guns no not double guns double shot i keep mixing those up for some reason and then just because we can't start with a ninja on this map you could on some of the easy maps but not on these harder maps I'm going to be getting a 000 sub and the 000 dart. And then we're going to be getting Gwen early on too. The ninja can deal with camo, which is really nice. Gwen can deal with the lead, which is also really nice. And uh, one thing to note that I kind of messed up in this recording is that you want to place the heli pad itself kind of close to Gwen because you can get a passive buff. Um, I did not really do that. So it, placing it off to the side is pretty nice. And because, of course, it's a heli pad and you don't really alk buff the comanche commander the placement doesn't matter so you just get it like next to gwen you can get the village in there and then you can get a few support towers on the side that's going to work out pretty well so we're just going to be getting the 203 eventually and then i'm going to be getting the um Blue jitsu and the alchemist and of course as i mentioned you a lot of times you aren't going to have just the early game tower early game carry tower doing all of the work um, and uh, as I mentioned in the clip before, sometimes you can have a combination of bolts. Sometimes you might have just a double shot ninja helping you out early game, while you might work into a 302 for an Apache Prime strategy, because that like uh, on a lot of maps, just one 302 heli with alt buff may not be enough to beat all of the rounds in the early game. So you might have just like another thing helping out or to help afford said tower. Um, so yeah. In this case, we definitely can bring the 202 heli to help out with the ninja because it definitely can do that. So we're going to be having that, but we are going to be getting our ninja up. We're going to be getting the alchemist buff, and we could we could have used our Gwendolyn ability there too. Um, I am weird and decided to buy the uh, cross pass for the alchemist after the Moab came, which you want to buy it before. But after that, we can start going straight for our Comanche defense. So with everything working to, uh, together, we have the Ninja and the Alchemist. They're going to help out uh, help out this 203 Heli, which obviously doesn't have the greatest balloon popping power to get up to the 9000 something dollars right here. And as you can see, we can get the Comanche defense right there like that. Now this guy is going to be pretty powerful, and I'm going to get the village right here, just a 220, and that on some easier maps is all you need to save up to the comanche commander however with the strategy we are right at the end of the early game we got our pretty good tower up the comanche defense and that's the goal of this early game so it's a win let's go on to the next section so now we're going to be taking a look at the next section which is going to be section four camo detection so camo detection is something that a lot of people struggle with so let's go over it and how we basically deal with it in chimps mode in general so the way that i'm going to be looking at it is that there's two objectives you're either going to need camo or you're not going to need camo up to round 42 so let's slow down a bit and let's look at your setup twice once for round 37 and round 42 if you don't know what i'm saying here's some example does this strategy need camo for round 37 it does not kind of clearly and let's take a look at this even though i added a few ninjas does this need camo for round 42 and on no it does not all those ninjas are doing a lot of work how about this strategy does it need camo for 37 no it does not because we have some help there but for 42 and on this one does need some help because we don't have any other towers that are helping out now how about for this strategy do i need camo and yes i do for 37 and again once i get the round 37 covered Yes, I do need more camo for 42. So basically, we're going to have to get out of the habit of buying shitty cross paths, getting better cross paths, and getting proper camo support and proper help with camos at the right time. So 
I'm going to be looking at some towers that will help out with camos, like the uh, dart monkey, the ninja monkey, the wizard monkey there, along with a spike factory and submarine. Uh, those guys will help out with camos very on in the early game. And then once we get later on into the game, so more into the 40s, right before round 42, you're probably going to want, if you need it, a tower that removes the camo or gives your towers camo detection, like the mortar, the shimmer, the village and the submarine these are really the most effective and on harder maps if some camos slip through the other methods you just go for a camo village that will get it down well the end goal is to see if you need any camo helpers to get you to round 42 and then once you are on round 42 when the camos start to get harder you get one of the more permanent methods like the village or something that removes the camo like the shimmer for example now this will allow you to turn your shitty cross paths like this 420 heli and the 024 ace into much much stronger cross paths like the 204 uh hell ace and the 42 402 heli i can speak um so yeah this is just really important you need to strip the camo you need to get rid of it it will make your towers better and if you really hate this just use etienne well of course, you want to use Etienne for better reasons than just camo, but let's move on. For our next strategy, the Inferno Ring with primary expertise, we have a little bit of a familiar voice doing this one, so here you go. All right, we're going to try to beat off the coast chimps using the Inferno Ring primary expertise combo. So, to start off, the start of the game doesn't really matter. Just use as chief of monkeys as you can to get past the first few rounds. Really the only things you have to worry about are one, obviously beating the rounds, and two, not taking up important space. So we're going to be putting all of our defenses, our main defenses, on the right side of the map. So this left doesn't really matter at all. Now, the reason why that's important is uh, these guys could eat up the alchemist buffs that we want in our stronger towers later on. And two, some spots are just better for defending. So we don't want to use those on in towers we don't really plan on upgrading. Now, I opted to use Gwendolyn for the attack speed buff that she gives um, that she gives to the Infernal Ring at later levels. However, you could very easily have picked like Sada for a super easy early and mid game. Um, and he didn't like him. Sada would have been a very good choice. I just really like the buff she gives. I think it's more fun, in my opinion. So what we're going to do from here Probably just go straight to Gwen. We want to get our heroes down early, obviously, but Gwen doesn't have the strongest early game, which is why we had to pick up Twin Guns. Twin Guns secured rounds uh, 9, 10, maybe. Oh, and 11. There we go. Um, and then it'll be a nice, decent timing to get Gwen down. We don't want to delay her too much, but uh, they're down right there-ish. Start getting some XP. The reason why I picked over here is one, we'll be defending the right side with our Infernal Ring, and two, she'll be able to shoot down this nice little straightaway. Uh, she doesn't have uh, seeking projectiles like the submarine does, so straightaway is pretty important for her to get the most out of her pierce. While this isn't the longest one, uh, it's not too bad. We could have put her up here and she would have been sh uh, able to shoot down this whole path or farther to the right, be able to shoot up. But this way, she'll be right next to our defenses so that we can use her heated up buff later on. But we can talk about that later. Anyway, for now, she'll mainly just be used for her cocktail for anything that gets passed. And then eventually, advanced intel sight after we pick up airburst darts. Now I assume some yellows will get past this submarine. Or not. Well, round 15 significantly harder. So something will probably get past here. Uh, I assume a pink or two, and we'll just throw down a cocktail. There we go. Nothing will get past that. Look at that. She's shooting down the straightaway. It's a great time. We'll just spam airburst starts. This is great because it three X's the projectiles of our submarine. And projectiles are the easiest way, or increasing the projectile count is like the easiest way to increase your damage. Um, just because buffs work on it so well. Like the alchemist buff that gives extra pierce and damage and attack speed, it affects every projectile, which is great. Um, whereas if we just got an upgrade that increased the attack speed, it doesn't work as well. 
still good, obviously. But anyway, let's just work towards advanced intel. That way, if a few balloons get by, uh, the sub can help out Gwen over on the right side. Now, the next thing we have to do is get down a tack shooter. Can you just think about that quick? Yeah. So we're going to get down a tack shooter. This guy's going to become the Inferno Ring. We can decide if we want it in front or behind Gwen. Typically, you want your defenses slightly behind Gwen because you want her attacking as much as possible. The only reason we're putting this guy in front is one, it has almost no range. See, so Gwen can already shoot first. And two, do we need a cocktail here? No. Um, and two, Hot Shots has like surprisingly decent damage against the mob and the mobs in the 40s and 50s is what we will struggle with the most this run that's why sada would have been nice but uh because we don't have the most mob damage but we can account for that with the towers we pick up soon the first of which hot shots so that's solid we don't have any more camos until i believe 33 but we still don't have the most popping power in the back. It's like pretty easy for the balloons to get past. We're uh, just uh, having the submarine carry us for now, which is fine. I think we're gonna save up for a spactory. An elk buff spactory, when you go spiked balls into spiked mines, just counters the heck out of uh, ceramics and mob class balloons in the mid game. And that's what, uh, like I just said, is what we'll need the most help with. Now, we do want to decide if we want to discount village. Discount village saves you a bunch of money in chimps um, just because we'll be getting so many monkeys. However, I don't think we need to rush it this game. In super hard maps, it can be beneficial to rush the heck out of a discount village while you can still defend. However, our mid game, like right now, we could struggle through, but the couple thousand dollars that'll save us is not, it won't be game changing, if that makes sense. Look at this. Like we can probably go for it now, now that we have decent defenses and not have to worry about a thing. As opposed to getting it before this factory and save a few hundred dollars. I don't know. That's just a personal preference. If we were going for like a record in the challenge editor, definitely would have got the discount village first. But this is an actual chimps run going for the black border. So just play it safe on a easier map like this. There we go. Put the village down where it'll affect everything. The nice thing about this spot is once we get bigger radius, Ooh, we'll pick up submergent support if the factory and Gwen can't handle everything. Ah, oh, that's easy to defend. I don't know why I started to panic. Um, once we get bigger radius, it'll be able to affect this whole bottom section, basically, especially once we make it into a PEX. Uh, so I put it up top so we can have a ton of space for upgrades. Anyway, I think what we'll do is pick up Monkey Commerce. And then make this guy a one, two, zero and go from there. Maybe go, we might even go all the way to like a one or a three, two, zero. We'll see. Hmm. Do we want to pick up a submergent support for 36? Probably. That's probably wise. However, the cocktail, I think, can take out the first two waves of camos. I guess we'll find out. Oh, look at that. That's a nice hot shot. Even affects our factory. Perks of having Gwen shooting constantly. Um, all right, let's get even faster production. The reason we opted to make this guy a one, two, zero instead of a one, zero, two is because this is only a one lane track and it's not long enough. There we go. Sure. It's not long enough to need the, the long life spikes. Like that will probably not make a difference. So making this guy um, a one, two, zero, probably much better than um, long life spikes. You really only get long life spikes on multi-lane tracks where the smart targeting is super nice or on a super short track where you really need that uh, extra attack speed at the beginning. 
Um, I guess the other thing to talk about is it's super nice to micro between submerge and first on a submerge and support sub because we definitely needed that attack speed or we definitely needed the damage of its air burst, but we um, also needed the camo detection. So you can just go back and forth. Boom, make all of them visible so we don't completely rely on our spactory. I think we could have just popped them all with the spikes. But if you can make it easier, might as well, you know? Just like this. We're going to throw this down. Maybe not even needed. But now we have our spiked balls. That'll help out a ton against the mope and any ceramics. Um, I don't think there are any camos this round. Just the regen rainbows. We're going to put this guy in first so he doesn't accidentally make a regrow farm. Because that would be unfortunate. Not that there's like enough time, but he could make us have to deal with a few extra. Let's get bigger radius. And I want to give this guy his own personal alchemist. That way... It'll do a bunch of extra damage. We could not get to Berserker Brew, unfortunately. That's okay. We're going to throw down our cocktail a little to the right. I didn't mean to fast forward through that, but um, I moved it farther back because it does more damage to the insides of the mob than the mob itself. Just because it has a ton of pierce, the wall of fire does. So I wanted the pineapples to pop the mob and then have the wall of fire help out with the insides. And that's exactly what happened. Let's see. Gwen's now shooting two fire blasts. That's super nice. Um, maybe we'll just go for a Bluntonium reactor. We're going to leave this guy as a 300. We could make it a 320 to buff this guy more. By buff him more, it just means that the buff lasts longer, but uh, it doesn't look like we really need that yet. Leaving the Alchemist as a 300 is like a super cost effective buff. Oh. Submerge, decamo them, help out. If you want, you can go back and forth like this. I'm going to put it as a reactor. We don't have any mob class balloons until the 50s. So I think that this reactor is going to help out a ton until then. Not much we'll be able to get by. We have plenty of lead popping power back here. So making this guy a 402, perfectly fine. Kind of crazy. I think that's going to be our only camo detection. It has like a nice long bend. And with that extra attack speed at the bottom path, it should be able to get every DDT. Maybe not every single one of them, but it should. It should. And if not, our spiked mines will be able to handle it, which is likely our next purchase. So this locks up all the balloons that will be coming our way, except for ceramics, basically ceramics and Maybe rainbows? I guess leads will get through. Um, and then the spiked mines will take care of all of the mobs and the ceramics. Yeah, we're fine. I was debating throwing down a cocktail, but we'll just do that here. Wow. Okay. It's crazy. And then around 47 is long enough to where we get cocktail back. You love to see it. So spiked mines, super strong right now. Wonder how long that will last. Uh, it'll completely carry the mid game, which is super nice. Uh, typically in the mid game, you want to buy, uh, buy monkeys that'll let you save up a ton of money to get your tier fives, whether that be like a plasma accelerator, um, a balloon area denial system, even like a dragon's breath, surprisingly good. Um, or in our case, a spiked mines. Oh, I kind of want to go a dragon's breath now that I think about it because it gets buffed by Gwen, but we're too deep. If we need some extra popping power, we'll get that. All right. So next on the agenda, make this guy a 420 to buff our spiked mines. As you'll be able to see, this guy is going to crush. Yeah, they got through what? One pineapple, maybe. If that, there we go. Beautiful. Now we'll be able to upgrade to the Ring of Fire. And have a great old time. All right, so this is part eight, the discount villages, and this is a bit complicated, so let's get into it. All right, 
right, so let's first start off with an example of the discount villages. So here is quite a common thing you might see. It's a double discount setup. It's where you have one O. 22 village and 1220 giving you the double discount along with camo village and the jungle drums and so on if you want to go past that so i'm going to be getting a little bit of a setup we're going to have like a sun avatar under the discount an 023 glue and a brittlement a bomb in there too and this is pretty good we have some money left over now let's give us the same amount of cash and buy the same things but with just 1220 village and we're going to notice quickly we aren't going to be able to afford this and this is because we are missing out on the villages so even though we bought more towers and more upgrades we aren't going to be able to afford the whole embrittlement and the cross path of the glue which is big and what does this mean this means you are discounting and you are crazy at the game because you're doing tons of work to save a little bit of money so yeah let's talk about this the monkey business saves 10 percent and the monkey commerce goes on more with that same additional five percent up with two more villages for tier three only so you can get three discounts all in range to discount a tower but this is usually not worth it we'll look into that so here's a little bit of a chart you can pause it but this is kind of like the math and break even points for the villages and if you notice you're going to really only be getting these villages if you're going to be spamming a ton of towers or really expensive ones you could use a discount in a little more casual setting if you're not going to be getting camo on your village so you'd have like a 202 village and then build some stuff around that in a more casual setting but when you're going to be doing more discounts like double or even triple discounts you're gonna have a lot of towers like for example this sniper spam uh it's just great with these spam strategies for particularly towers that are tier three and below and really expensive towers namely super monkeys that's kind of where you're only really going to be getting triple discounts and I am going over discounts really quickly because they are a daunting task and they really aren't required for most of your games. So if you want to learn more about them, you can go and learn more about them. But let's just move on for most players. All right, to round off this video, we have the fourth strategy, which is the sub commander. And it's coming right now. All right, hello. So this is going to be the next example um, for the early game I played. So it's up around. Um, and this will be on Dark Castle. So the first thing about this is the map itself, I guess. Dark Castle is kind of joked for like being the easiest expert map. And that's because it is. But um, it's more comparable. And I'm using this in a case of more comparable to a harder um, advanced map. So this early game, it actually has RNG. But it's just in round 6, so who really cares? And it's pretty simple. We're just going to be going for the darts and the sub. Now, the one big thing to note is that this early game is going to be very, very similar. Actually, more or less the exact same thing besides a different hero than uh, a lot of other strategies. Because uh, this is, of course, the early game. And Armor Piercing Darts with Outbuff is uh, one of the two most common early game carry towers. That's going to be Blue Jutsu with Outbuff and Armor Piercing with Outbuff. So, usually you probably saw it from other examples before. But you go for something like this even if uh subs are not related to your strategy because the tower that you're using to get to i mean the tower that you're using in your strategy in general is not really going to work early game so for example inferno ring that the uh ring of fire which is the tier four of the inferno ring that guy's not going to beat a mob so of course you're not going to be getting just a ring of fire to beat the early game so you're going to have like an early game carry which of course would be the bloom jitsu or the armor piercing darts all right so the big thing to note here i guess for round 15 because it's the first problem round is that you either are going to be doing two things to kill round uh, 15. if you can get an air burst darts before round 15 then you can do that it's perfectly safe like for this example but sometimes you can't get air burst starts before round 15 which means you're going to be in trouble so you're going to have to get a 201 sub it's a sub with the advanced intel and a 000 dart on no not a 000 dart a 000 sniper on strong and that usually is enough to beat it up so here we go we got the 202 sub this is a big guy he's really really strong and now i'm able to do a little bit more so um 
I'm not really going to be trying to focus on getting the hero super, super early, but we have a bit of wiggle room, uh, so that's going to be good. You might want to watch out for round 22 and 23, um, so you're either probably going to have your triple dark, triple guns up, triple guns, two or three sub, or your hero here just to help out. And then round 24, of course, we need to watch out for that. So I'm getting the enhanced eyesight under dark so we can get intel to the triple guns. So, um, as you can see, around 22 and 23, sometimes in harder maps, they usually can be scary. They got close, but we have Brickle here to clean up. And then I'm going to be getting the triple guns. I'll use my ability to, because these purples sometimes can be scary. The triple guns there on round 26, generally before 26. And that's because on round 27, you're going to have an option. Um, so sometimes you're going to have a little bit more money, and you can go for a... 2 acidic mixture dip sub but the thing that i don't really like about that and i recommend not using it on harder maps on easier maps you definitely can do it if you want but that's because sometimes the alchemist is random he'll maybe throw it on a dart monkey if the dart monkey is in range or he's gonna shoot late and sometimes on shorter maps you just die with that uh for round 28 so i recommend getting 1-0 sniper on strong that makes those leads easy nothing to worry about there so we'll have that guy on easier maps you can just save a little bit of money and go for the alchemist here so we got that he's doing well and next thing to note is just because there's so much synergy it's so strong we're getting alchemist buff for the um triple guns so the reason why you're going to be seeing the sub Alk or Ninja Alk a lot in the early game is just because they're so efficient with the Alk buff and they do something crazy. We get like three times more damage because they shoot at a, a pretty steady rate so they always have the Alk buff on top of them and also I'm going to be getting the cross path here. I'll explain that later but they always have the Alk buff on top of them but they also have great pierce with large amounts of projectiles because the air burst split the Ninja shoots many projectiles and they just do so so much more damage with the alk they're they're really strong towers and they're definitely go-to's for the early game there of course are more options for the early game but these guys are just so easy and so strong now for the cross path on alchemist i'm going to be getting these guys to um 401 later and that's because we're going to be having like groups of three subs and he's going to be buffing up all of the groups of three subs and for this crossbow um, on shorter maps, you're probably going to want to get this. Not really necessary in longer maps, but he makes round 36 and um, round 36 and 37 a lot easier with the camos and just stuff in general. So that's pretty good. We're going to be getting um, armor piercing darts, and we have our ability to, so we might as well use it on harder rounds. So when 40 comes, let's just pop this naval tactics ability, and boom, he's down. So this is a really easy early game. You should be. Uh, learning to use this because it, it's something that you're going to need a lot and we're going to be moving on to the rest of the strategy that relates around subcom later all right so now this is part 10 the recap so as you know i showed you four strategies and that was really the early game because i was focusing on the early game and showing you tips and explaining stuff but if you want to learn the rest of the stuff and maybe learn something new, I'm going to have the rest of the clips right here for you. In the last strategies, I'm going to do one simple recap where I kind of go through an early game and explain all of the tips that we have learned beforehand. So I'm going to be starting with Gwen, and I can't really start with Gwen, I guess. So we're going to be doing a start with our early game towers here. So let's go for the sub and the dart. This will work out just fine. And then we can move on from there. I'm going to have to get another dart right here to help out. I'm going to set this guy on strong so that he can take out the strong balloons while the sub and the dart will be on first, where they're going to clean up. And now the big wave of blues on round 10 should be coming. Put that round down as a notable round, but we should be good. We're going to be getting Gwendolyn at the very end here. Or we can just beat this round first and then get Gwendolyn down. All right, let's see where should we put one. Let's put one right here. This should be good. Uh, no issue rounds until round 15, so let's move on. I'm going to be starting off with a little bit of 
uh, an early game supplement because I'm going to be going for the carrier flagship here. On this map, it's going to need a little bit of extra help to get the carrier flagship up. I'm not going to get it, be able to get it up before round 40, so we're just going to have a destroyer. Um, so because this map is a little bit trickier, I'm going to just want a little bit of help. Not too much help though, because destroyer is very good. So in round 15, this sounds tricky, of course, so I'm going to use my ability here. Abilities are very good. You should use your abilities. So that's going to take out round 15 just fine, and then I'm going to be able to get air burst later on. Now, unlike the usual sub-early uh, game, you can't really use intel here because it doesn't really work like that. The, the map has a gimmick where it makes things tough, so it's just going to be a blown air burst. Pretty simple. I'm going to be able to start working on my boat. So I'm going to buy the boat right here while we have a chance. And if you notice, there are some tricky rounds coming up with blacks. So I'm just going to buy a grip shot and that should help us out. So we got the whites and blacks covered. Round 24 is coming up. So we don't have camo. As you can notice, we technically can use our ability to pop camo, but I'm just going to keep it simple and get this camo dart. That's just going to pop the camo. Then we're going to have to look, do we need more camo on 33? And yes, we do. So the way I'm going to deal with that is by then getting air burst. So now the sub can see camo too. And that should deal with camos till round uh, 37. So we're good on that front. But again, we're going to need camo later. So later when the harder camos on round 42 come out, we're going to deal with that. Now we can pop lead but with Gwendolyn. But just to help out a little bit more, because I don't want to rely on Gwen popping all the leads. I'm going to get the boat up to hot shots. And as you notice, I'm getting the good cross path, the double shot with our hot shots for the uh, carrier flagship. And that's because we do not need to get bad camo cross path because we are going to cover camo. We promise on that. So we're taking out this, we're taking out these rounds too, and we're gonna move on. Round 33 is here. And we can take out these camos with our advanced intel and our advanced eyesight. I'm not going to upgrade this guy to a triple guns. Uh, if you wanted to take out the camos on 37, just like this, you'd probably upgrade to triple guns, but I'm going to use this guy as a reactor later. So instead of that, after I get the destroyer, we don't really need the help of this guy anymore. So on round 37, we'll probably just temporarily submerge him and bring it back up. And that will help out on round 37, just in case if this like doesn't actually be able to beat it. I'm not sure. I know we can beat these camos though. So right here, I'm going to then go for an alchemist to buff up the destroyer. So I'll put you right here-ish. I think this will work. Okay, that buffs Gwen. So this is all right. Like the placements are tricky. Oh, I forgot to get that. I'm just gonna use my cocktail then. Um, see that was that was not the best, but luckily we had the cocktail and clutch, so we could beat those camos. Um, but because the placements are trickier, I'm not going to be able to get the priority buff, so I'm going to have to buy a, a fourth tier alchemist later. So let's just grab that. I guess later means like right now, and then we'll get the cross path. So you guys will be buffed, and then I'll use the Gwendolyn ability. I'll set her back here. So we can take out these ceramics. Didn't even need it. Nice. So now, as we notice, we need more camo coverage. So let's submerge you. We're submerged now. And we'll get reactor too. So just in case these pinks come through. Like if there's pinks coming through this guy, they might slip through. Because this is a shorter map. So I'm going to go all the way up to reactor. And now our camo is covered with. So you have a good cross pads. We have our alchemist buff. We have a camo buff. And now, because of that... I'm going to be able to buy a village, like right here-ish. I'm going to get you up to 200. We don't need the middle path, so we can get a discount there, but I'm not going to have anything to discount just yet. So in the future, potentially, depending on what towers I get, I could buy a discount and save money. But right now, we're going to be going for this tier 5, so we're upgrading to tier 4 and then a tier 5. So we're not going to be able to discount anything. So let's just save straight up for the tier five. We're going to have a good objective. So we've got uh, the destroyers alpha buffed. Gwendolyn also is too. 
Gwendolyn Alcbuff is actually pretty nice, um, but the destroyer with the Alcbuff is more important. So we got that, and now we can save up for the aircraft carrier, and that will get us going straight into the mid game here temporarily. All right, so just one more moment. There we go. So there it is. Now we are going to just simply save up for the carrier flagship. We uh, are going to get it right the beginning around 63. If we if we we are required to, we can use Firestorm on one wave around 63. But yeah, that's the early game. That's kind of everything. Uh, the thought process about it. That's how I was able to successfully do a very effective early game by using all the tips that I used in the video. Okay, so now that we're at the last bit of the video, I'm just going to go over some quick details of these strategies in case you wanted to try them out for yourself. So here we go. Let's go on to this Avatar of Wrath strategy. So on the beginner map here, we're going to be using this Avatar of Wrath and we left off with a bunch of these druids and now i'm going to alk buff them so i'm just going to get two 401 alks around here i'm going to be getting 401 because i want to buff more uh slower attacking towers ish if you're going to be wanting to buff a single faster attacking tower or just a single tower in general it's a bit better to go for a 420 because that's a more concentrated uh brew that's going on one or two towers but because we have so many uh the 401 is going to buff three towers more evenly so i'm going to get 401 here and to round it all off in the mid game before we go for the big avatar raft save up i'm going to get one 302 druid just in case something leaks so we've got that we've got the alchemist and we've got open buffing everything up and now this is where we simply trust and save straight up for the Avatar of Wrath. We're going to talk about this later in some later episodes, but being able to just go and not spend anything to make these big save ups is something that you're going to have to get used to because I see a lot of people, they get very nervous and even though they definitely aren't going to die, they just end up spending money and they'll never get the big upgrades they want. So $48,000 later, we have the Avatar of Wrath. From there, it's pretty simple. We basically won once you get it. You get the MIB, so you can pop DDTs. And then because the strategy is so good at popping heavy and single target damage, you only need a little bit of support for DDTs. So I'm just going to grab a simple Relentless Glue, and you can also grab something like a Spike Storm to help out too. That's pretty much it and all you need for the strategy, and you kind of have a win. Of course, it's always wise to spend your extra money, but just to show you, I'm going to win with just this. So this is a pretty good strategy. Definitely can use it uh, to beat up a lot of maps, and it's definitely one that I recommend too. But you shouldn't probably be using only one strategy because I do know quite a lot of people that have pretty much only played chimps with just this strategy. So maybe you should check out one or two more, but this one definitely is a strong one that uh, will help you out with a lot of these easier maps. So here it is, just shredding round 100. Uh, it does really well, just the way that Avatar of Wrath works. It does more damage when there essentially is more health of balloons on the screen. It's the RBE that determines it. But to add on to this, uh, if you wanted to make it a little more strong, you would just get a Sabo and a Spike Storm. Now let's go on to the Comanche Commander example. So this one's pretty simple so far. We just got our Comanche Commander. Um, the placement for the helipad could have been a bit more close, so we would have gotten the passive buff for the Gwen. But as you notice, this guy also works in a kind of unique way because when balloons get further along the track, he's gonna call in a temporary mini plane that will come to the rescue and chop these balloons up. So the only thing about that is that it's round based and it's temporary Just on some rounds like round 63, even though that the mini planes definitely can beat it up. Um, sometimes it isn't always consistent because you might get the planes coming back. So for round 63 in particular, and just in general on some more advanced maps that you're going to be playing this strategy on, because it definitely can be used for those advanced and even some of the expert maps. Um, I would just get a little something that will help deal with the ceramics inside. 
whether you want to micro and that be a downdraft or as I'm going to place down here conveniently after round 63 came a 420 balloon impact. Now this combination right here on these intermediate maps at least they're gonna save straight into the Comanche commander and of course if you need to you can use the abilities as I demonstrated there on pretty much nothing. So yeah that's pretty much it we're gonna just going to be going for the Comanche commander next. Okay, so now that we got Comanche Commander, you'll notice something quite silly that I'm doing, and that is that I'm not getting MIB. And that's because of some pretty cool interactions, which is called MIB Skip. Basically, we have the Glue Storm. Gwendolyn also does it too, but we're mostly looking at the Glue Storm in this run. So when you have the Glue Storm activated, it will allow towers to pop lead balloons, which makes a lot of the kind of important towers that don't practically pop DDTs it will allow them to pop DDTs like this Comanche Commander, for example. So when you have Blue Storm, any cross path works. So I just do 052 now. Uh, you can use the ability and while the ability is active, all of those DDTs, they can be popped by the sharp type damage doing towers like the Comanche Commander. Along with this, it also gives it good damage buffs, which makes the Comanche Commander pretty strong because it does spam a lot of projectiles. So on top of this, it is a little bit weak to uh, heavy rounds and round 100. Um, so I do get, so the heavy rounds and the bad rounds. So I do get a first strike to deal with round 100 and a few Moab presses there too. You just need to make sure that you have the glue storm ability up for the DDT rounds because that is basically the solution to pop the DDT rounds. You need that up or else it doesn't work. Of course, if you want to be safe, you can get MIB, but it's pretty cool to do this and you can get away without spending the money. You can spend it on something else. Of course, I spend this extra money on literally nothing, but it is always wise to spend your extra money in chimps games because you don't want to lose to something dumb. So you should do it. I'm just being pretty, pretty cool showing you that this is a strong strategy and it can do it with this cash spare. We could also pick up the uh, primary training now. I don't really see a difference, honestly. Just whatever one you want to do. There we go. Now a lot less balloons will make it to the spiked mines. Because of our Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire has less mob damage, which is why we uh, then... Sorry, let's see. Ring of Fire has less mob damage than the Hot Shots, which is surprising, but does way better against groups of balloons. So now that we have the Spiked Mines that kind of crushes mobs, it was okay to upgrade this. All right, round 63. We'll probably go Cocktail into a wall or into a Firestorm. There we go. Into another Cocktail. And plus, we have a ton of pineapple set up right now. So we should be just fine. Yes. We do have no abilities for next round. 64 is hard. However, we might get one back. Let's put Cocktail near the back. Throw it down just to help out. The reinforced mobs are nothing to laugh at, so... Better be safe than sorry. We'll have Firestorm up and running for next round. But the next few waves kind of just print money. As long as you can handle BFBs, which we proved we could on 60, we're pretty solid. Uh, the next scary wave, I mean, 75 can be tough. 76 can be tough, but we'll just use an ability. Um, other than that, kind of just print money in the 60s through 80s. Luckily, it didn't really matter. All right, 75 is actually a hard round. 75 and 76. So many BFBs come. But we need to save this for 76. So we'll see how we handle the first wave. All right, yeah, we'll be able to pop these. Just in case, I'll we'll put this guy way back here in case they make like a big dent. Yeah, I'll throw the cocktail down. Just in case, but I think we're perfectly fine. 76. We'll go like that. Should take it out. Oh, yeah. Easy. 78 will also be easy because we can just double Firestorm. 
And uh, by the end of 79, we'll have enough money. Maybe earlier. 79 at the latest. We'll have enough money for the Inferno Ring. BFBs. I don't really know how much money they give us. You'd think I would by now. Just the money changes with the rounds, so never learned. Never bothered to memorize it. All right, let's throw down this cocktail. It's quite a few of them. I don't know if it'll be... Yeah, they didn't even... They got, what, halfway through our spike pile? But... So, I've kept up the strat of uh, moving the cocktail to the back if we're facing BFBs and MOBs. MOAB, sorry. And putting it up front if we need it for balloons. I guess we can keep it at the back now that I think about it. Because... This guy and Gwen are now strong enough to just handle basically any balloon that we're not going to ability for. It's just the it's just the blimps. There we go. This will be fun. Have a huge wall built up for the BFB. Oh, look at that. This BFB is going to give us the money for it. Boom, get it on round 79, like we said. I purposely didn't buy that right away, just so I could be right. I'm aware we could afford it on 78. All right. Uh, so, Infernal Ring. Tons of pierce. Uh, good damage. And it gets a sick meteor. That's what this targeting is for. We're going to tell the meteor to go to the strongest balloons on screen, which will be the BFBs for now. Now... The Meteor only has one pierce if you cross path it as a 502, but it gets buffed by our primary training. So this guy has two pierce. And we're going to up this by giving it an Alchemist. Now it has, oof. The stronger stim have three pierce? Two, two or three. I think it's three. So this guy has like five pierce on the meteor and you'll just see it zooming around the map look at that and wait for it we're gonna get a pex and give it even more pierce oh we're crazy just in time for super ceramics too okay the last few rounds have been like a complete joke i have not been paying attention and we're already at a pex so that's pretty cool we'll keep this guy in first just to take care of all the ceramics why not the Meteor will take care of the rest. And now we get to the part of the game where we only worry about support. We kind of have all the damage we need. I mean, maybe bad damage. Uh, but what we will do is, first of all, let's see. Yeah, we're going to get all of the DDTs with that, with this sweet D camo. We're going to get a nice little relentless glue. Oh my goodness, we're crazy. So I wanted to get it outside of the Alchemist range, but inside this guy's range. But look how... Oh, it's because it was Alk buffed. I was wondering why that was so big. Anyway. Strong. There we go. If anything gets close to that, uh, we'll Relentless Glue it. And then... So Relentless Glue is a good support monkey because it slows down DDTs and uh, blimps that get to it. Like by... 37.5% or something like that. Plus, when they pop, it does a stun. So it's just a super good stalling tower. Stalling is amazing for us because we have two towers with global range and a guy that puts down spikes all the time. So, to stall even more, which is kind of the theme of the late game, is we'll get at least two mob press boomers. Two is normally like a good number uh, in general, but because we have a discount PEX, we're going to get like four. So the Pex makes primary monkeys first two upgrades, first two tiers free. And then the discount makes the third tier cheaper. So for very little money, we just got an absurd amount of stall, like way more than we need. Now, this will be interesting. I assume we'll decamo every single DDT. The Inferno Rings Meteor can see camos. So that's why I wasn't really worried about it. Plus, they spend so much time going through this guy. You can see anytime they lose the cobwebs, they're visible. So, yeah. We were perfectly fine. Now. Does this make it to the water? Heck yeah, baby. 
Let's get a first strike just for round nine or just for round 100. And we'll be able to pop the bad, no problem. I mean, look, we're popping ZOMGs at the start of the track. And all of our defenses are at the back. That's kind of absurd. We're not even using abilities. The extra attack speed from Gwen is so nice here. It's just shooting out its meteors 20% more often. 20% faster. All right. I don't even know. I we're, we're good to go. I was debating getting a main mob, but look, they're not even making it to this factory right now. And it's round 98, like the highest RBE round in the game. So even if they get close, they just get pushed back and slowed. Uh, but that's not too bad. Now, mob presses aren't the best against DDTs, but that's what this guy's for. Now the bad, we picked up the first strike just to do this. A little tip is uh, once it enters the third phase of damage. So the Band-Aid was one. It's 25% hurt once it has that. This is two, so it's over 50% hurt. Once it gets the effect on the tail, it is 75% damaged. And then we'll just count to three. Use this. Boom. No insides. Let's go. We got to skip it. Not that the ins insides would have been an issue because we had the mo presses, but we got to skip it. And there we go. Nice and easy. Our Inferno Ring got 1.4 million pops. Oh, this guy got 71,000, 88,000, 41,000. Not bad. But that's the Pex Inferno Ring uh, strategy. Pretty easy and straightforward. You can... Uh, do a ton of different monkeys. Like I said, we didn't have to go spiked mines. You could have gone a different mid game tower. You didn't have to get four of these guys. As you saw, barely anything even made it to them. But you can really pick up whatever you want. But there you go. So moving on into the mid game, we, I'm going to be setting up a double discount right after I get my stronger stimulant. And this guy's going to come in MIB later, so we won't get a cross path on him. But this guy's going to be getting drums, and it's going to cover a pretty good amount of area so we can buff multiple subs. From here, I'm going to grab another sub. I got this a little late, so we might as well use our ability here. And the big thing to note with this is that we're going to be looking at getting the sub commander right before round 63. So that means when round 49, big number, round 49 rolls around, you have to stop spending your money. And you're going to save up for the sub commander to get it before round 63. So usually you can get away with your discounts, your ALK, a APD, and two triple guns. So now we got to stop spending. From here, you're going to be able to use uh, this setup and your brickle abilities to beat all of the rounds. Um, so that's really going to be all you have. And some maybe tricky rounds you might see is like uh, 57... Around 60, definitely, 61, 62, and then you'll have some other abilities to use, too. Um, but yeah, just stuff like that. So that's going to be it, and we're going to see you for the sub-commander. Alright, so for round 59, Brickle's Mines to take out the Camo Leads. It's going to look pretty tense on a few maps, especially if Brickle's stuffed away at the back. But usually these Mines can do pretty well, and we're going to save the Naval Tactics especially because BFB, you kind of want to have naval tactics there. If you don't have naval tactics, tactics it can get really close on round uh, 60. 61 should be pretty good, and then we're going to be getting our sub commander up here very soon. Let me get this guy, please. There we go. So now we're pretty, pretty good, and we can work on building our other towers. All right, so from here, there's two routes. You're either going to be doing a full sub spam and getting MIB village, or you're going to be doing sub commander, a few subs, and a preemptive strike, which is the 050 sub, and that is going to be taking care of the DDTs. The only condition with preemptive strike is that you are going to have to take out the DDTs inside the bad with a perfect first strike time. So if you're maybe not as good as that, and you want a more safe game, you can just do a full-on sub-spam with MIB, which is what I'm going to be doing here. So for the mid-game, I'm just going to grab some more ALKs that will be buffing up the subs, and I'm going to be grabbing some more subs under the double discount. Now normally on other maps, you're going to be wanting to get more intel um, as you get into your game so that you can get more reach on the subs, but only for this map, just now I'm getting the intel. Grabbing these guys to 002 right up there. 
Uh, you pre on obviously other maps, you're going to be doing that way before this, but right now, I'm just getting it. And I guess because I didn't really uh, mention this, I didn't have time to mention this when I was covering the early game, of course, obviously, this strategy only works on maps where you have a good amount of water, you can get a hefty amount of subs under one double discount village. So I maxed out these guys. Um, there is no room, maybe right there, yeah, right there, but that's gonna be it for the amount of, uh, double discount triple guns, and you need them under di double discount or else they won't get IB, and now we can get, uh, alright, and now right before the 90s roll around, we can start maximizing a bit of our damage and upgrading some of these triple guns into armor piercing darts, so let's go and upgrade these guys into armor piercing darts. And then, after we get all of them, usually enough, once you have all of, within a range of uh, the MIB to armor piercing darts, you should just go straight for some support, because the 90s are here, and we do need to get some support in. So I'm just going to be getting this one last guy, and then we're going to be getting some support up. So when it comes to what these guys are good at, they're really good at single target and really good at DDTs, but they're not really the best with heavy. So I'm going to be getting a Relentless Glue just to help out, and then I'm going to be grabbing a few Moab Presses. You also can use your ability and Brickle's Mega Mind here just to uh, keep everything in check. So around 95, might as well use that. They probably have it anyways, but we're just going to be using that just to be safe. And then we're probably also going to be using that later on in 96 and around 98. It's going to be pretty big. So I'm going to get my Relentless Glue. We can get a few mob presses just to help out because we have MIB. But I'm also going to be doing something to catch some ceramics. So I think I'm going to go for a snowstorm right here. Um, obviously, we don't want these guys stealing the alpha, so we'll keep them out of range. And because we have MIB, we can go for the snowstorm. That's not going to interfere with our the sharp type damage on the subs because now we have uh, an MIB that will allow it to pop the frozen balloons. So they're taking that out. Round 98 is here. Unfortunately, on this map, our, our Brickle Mega Mines sometimes don't really do much of anything. But that's alright. We can use our uh, our Naval Tactics ability. We can also use the Snowstorm ability if it comes to need, needing that. Uh, but we should be good. Might as well use the Snowstorm ability here on 99 then. Right there. That's good. Took that all out. Um, for round 99, sometimes it might be on some of these harder maps a little bit better to get something else to take that out. But for round 100, you should be shredding it um, if you need a first strike. Obviously, you could budget that in. A first strike or a sabo, uh, you might be able to look in getting that. So there's a sabo, and I guess more or so of a spike storm if you're using this exact same composition. That, so that would be really effective, really easy black border. The subs are strong with Brickle and just a little bit of support to take out some of the harder rounds. You're going to be getting a lot of black borders from easy all the way up to some of these harder advanced maps like this. Of course, it's very map dependent on what it works with, but it's a pretty good strategy, so you should check it out. Alright, so we have finally made it to the end, and I just want to say thanks for watching. Once again, I know I said this in the last episode, but this was such a big project and it's honestly far more than I ever thought, but I will get through it. Um, it's been really nice when these episodes have came out and if you're ready to check out the next episode or the other episodes in general, go to the link in the pinned comment and let me know what you thought. And I will be in my Discord a bit so you can join that and talk to me if you have any questions or have any uh, more interests on learning some of these other strats.